Well hello there! I'm Meticulix, bringing you a basic guide to sideways building with LEGO. First, we'll quickly take a look at useful pieces based on their respective categories, specifically bricks, plates, and brackets. There are a wide variety of bricks to choose from, mainly residing in the 1x1 family, but there are also 1x2, 1x4, even double high variants. Interestingly, the double high ones are just one plate short of being two bricks tall. We'll talk more on that later. For plates, the only one to really talk about is the 2x2x2 two 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 thirds, named so as it is two plates high on one end to accommodate the side studs. Brackets are the most interesting of the bunch, as you can find them in pretty much any size you need, but there is one catch. If we compare a bracket with one of these bricks, we find that the stud on the bracket protrudes half a plate farther than the stud on the brick. This is a common feature of all brackets, so keep that in mind. Another interesting trait is that almost all brackets come in an inverted version. Why is this, you ask? Well, to answer that, it's time to go into detail on some LEGO math. If we take a 1x2 brick and stand it on its end, then take a stack of 5 plates next to it, well, technically 4 plates in a tile, we find that 5 plates equals 2 studs high. We'll use this formula, if you will, and apply it to the brackets. Let's now take an inverted bracket, place a brick on top, and then a normal bracket. As before, two studs equal five plates. I suppose this doesn't specifically explain why they're different. Well, let's try it this way. If we take a normal bracket and place an inverted bracket on top of it, it looks the same, until we see it from the side. Now there are two plates in the center instead of one. So what changed? It's because LEGO bricks are not completely square. See how there's a little lip under the stud? This is a height of half a plate. We see the same thing if we place two plates under a bracket. Half a plate of color is showing. Now with an inverted bracket, we'll place two plates on the top of it. The half plate is above the stud instead of under it. So what does this all mean? It means you can't just put two of the same type of piece on top of each other. To keep the ratio intact, you need to oscillate normal with inverted. This applies to bricks and plates as well. But like everything, there is an exception. Remember those double high bricks I was talking about? Those guys are five plates tall. Therefore, they already fit the ratio requirement, so you can stack them as high as you like with no concern. Same with the double high brackets. Just fill in the empty space with a brick and a plate and you're good to go. Again, remember that 2x2x2 two by two by two thirds plate? It was two plates tall. Now a brick is three plates tall. See where I'm going? Together, they equal the ratio. I'd like to point out here that you can start with a normal part and place an inverted one on top, but it will be half a plate offset compared to the pre-assembled double high pieces. Now I'd like us to take a moment to look at two practical applications of what we've just learned. Let's say you need studs to be flush with the floor, but you don't have a 2x2x2 two by two by two thirds plate on hand. What can you do? Well, if you take an inverted bracket and place it one stud back, then add two plates onto it, it will cover the distance properly. Since five plates equals two studs, then two and a half plates equals one stud. Example two shows us again the use of half plates. Since there is a half plate lip under the stud of this brick, we can add an inverted bracket on the side like so to add studs to the bottom of our build. Now what if I told you there was a piece that was both normal and inverted? Behold, the headlight brick, or commonly referred to as the Erling brick, named so after the LEGO designer that created it. The first thing to note is that the stud on the side is recessed half a plate in, contrary to brackets which protrude out half a plate. Because of this, if you put a plate on the Erling brick, it would then be flush with the bracket, making the two of them compatible. But the most interesting feature of an Erling brick is that it has an anti-stud on its back. So if we lay it down, with the top stud now being on the side, because the secondary stud was recessed half a plate, the new height is now just two plates, meaning we can place a normal brick of stud on the top to complete the ratio. Granted, this does have limitations because part of the Erling brick is sticking out from the back, but it just goes to show the particular attention to the design process of LEGO bricks. There are many more pieces you can use for sideways building, and now that you know what to look for, you can find just the right one. So go on, build something sideways! <laughs>